Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for a brand new season of Let's Make a Game with Game Maker. And hopefully this shall develop into a nice automation game. The main purpose of this series is to learn to program a little bit with the language of Game Maker, to learn how to develop games, get inputs from the viewers, and of course the viewers in return will be able to learn something from the series and kind of try their own things. So with that out of the way, I would say we are gonna get into the first episode right off the bat. What we want to achieve in today's episode is establish some kind of a core object that will be able to spawn in a basic tile generation. It's not gonna be very fantastic to begin with. We just need some kind of a reference on the floor so we know where we actually are. And we also want to make a basic camera movement so we can actually go around and check out stuff. So these two things are going to be the goal for today's episode. The next time we can then go into maybe the first object that we can use, for instance, conveyor belts. It's going to be all about automation, processing resources into more complex resources using machinery, etc, etc, all that kind of stuff. Right, so up here you can see the folder structure of Game Maker. For the first few episodes, the only folders we are interested in are the sprites, the scripts, the objects and the rooms. The rooms you actually require in order to have some kind of a scenery where you can place objects into, and this already explains the objects. They are basically instances in the room that you can see or maybe not see depending on their state. And the objects take their graphics from the sprites folder. So this is where all of your graphics are gonna go. And last but not least, the scripts folder, which is kind of self-explanatory. The scripts are gonna go in there. The first thing I want to do is set up all of the file structures, the basic elements that we are gonna require. So first of all, we're gonna create a new room. And I like to have prefixes for everything. The prefix for the rooms is rm underscore. And it's gonna be basically the main room for the time being. We are also gonna set a width and a height for the time being, which is gonna be 3200 for both of them. So that will result in 100 tiles because one single tile is 32 pixels. We're also gonna set up something in the views section. We're gonna enable the use of views and we're also gonna enable the first view, which is view zero. And we're gonna set this up to actually have a resolution I can deal with, which is uh, 1270 times 720. Oh, that is a bit much. Let's do 720. There we go. And we can copy this down to the port on screen. So these first parameters are basically the view, what you can see in the scenery. And then the second parameters are the port, which is basically the resolution. So if you don't have these numbers at the same exact thing, you will actually get a distorted picture. No, that is absolutely not true. You just have to have the same ratio. So for instance, you could set the view double as high, so you would be able to see 2540 pixels instead of just 1270, but still see that on the same aspect ratio, so on the same resolution here, if you know what I mean. So you just have to have the same ratio but not necessarily the same numbers. But we are gonna start with the same numbers nonetheless. With the camera movement, we will change that. Good, that's all we have to do for the room. Let's save that and go ahead and create a new sprite. I do want an object that I can use for most of my scripts. It's gonna be in the game from the beginning and it's gonna be called SPR for sprite as a prefix. And we're just gonna call this core edit that sprite and we want to create a new sprite here with the width and height of 32, so one tile size. And we want to double click this in order to edit this. Now this can be anything, it doesn't really matter. In the end we're not gonna see it, but for the time being I do want something that is nice and visible, for instance a little dot. We're gonna save that and of course what we need to do is create an object that goes along with that. 
The prefix for objects is of course obj and we're gonna call this core. So objects that correspond with a certain graphic, I'm gonna name the exact same thing. We have to choose the graphic right here. And for the depth, I'm actually gonna use minus 100. So the lower you go, the lower into the minus, the higher up it is. So objects that are at minus 99 are gonna be obstructed by objects with the level minus 100. Okay, there we go. Let's save this as well. Then next up, we're gonna need three more scripts that I want to prepare. The first script is gonna be the global variable. So in here, we're gonna save everything that is related to global, no, global variables. There we go. Just gonna make a nice little title here. Maybe let's make this even more title-ish by adding some more equal signs. Good, we're gonna save this, create yet another script. This script, the second one is gonna be called script tile generation. Also give this a nice title, tile generation. And then last but not least, we're gonna need one more script for today's episode, which is script camera movement. Also a title for you, of course, camera movement. There we go. Now let's make sure that these scripts are actually gonna go on top of the core object. So in here we have to add a bunch of events. For instance, we need the create event, which is basically calling everything in here, all the scripts we are loading, as soon as the object core is being generated. And since the object core is gonna be in the room from the beginning, it's gonna be generated right off the bat. So we have to go into the control right here and check the script. We want the global variables to run on the create event. And we also want the tile generation to run on the create event. The camera movement, however, is going to have to go on the step event. The step event is going to be called every time we actually have a frame running through the system. So at the moment it's 30 frames per second. Let's actually up that to 60 frames per second. So the step event is gonna be called 60 times per second, if I'm not mistaken. We of course want to add the camera movement script to that bad boy, there we go. Let's save that core object and also make sure that it is actually spawned in the room in the beginning. So we're gonna go to objects here and spawn it in once. So there we go. Everything that is related to the core is gonna kick off once the room has been created. Great, so now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and start diving into the script. Let's uh, run the game just to be sure that we haven't done anything stupid right now. Yeah, you can see this is the room. The window size is also fine and right here on the top we have our little bad boy body, the core object. Okay, let's get to coding, finally. Global variables, what are we gonna have in here? We first of all want to define the tile sizes, so we can conveniently change it if we like to. Right now it is 32, so all the tiles we're gonna have in the game are 32 in size. Of course, there can be machineries that are larger or potentially smaller, I don't know yet. But that is an important variable to define. Next up, we need the tiles width, which are basically all the tiles until we get to the end of the room. So at the moment, that would be 100 tiles until the room ends. So what we can do right here is actually use the room width, which is the variable. Of course, the room width is equal to the room width. So if we divide this by or through, uh, what do you say? Dividing through or by? I'm just saying by. So global tile size. So basically this spews out a pixel number, which is 3200 divided by the global tile size will equal in 100 tiles because the tile size is 32. Good, we're gonna do the same thing with the tile height or let's actually use tiles. So this is a little bit less confusing. So how many tiles are there in the width and how many tiles are there in the height? And of course, room height is also a variable we can use for that. 
there we go. Next up, I want to set up a starting position for the core, which should be like in the center of the view. So it should not be on the top left of the game, but on the center of the view. Because the camera is actually gonna follow the core object, and the core object is what we want to move around. So we are gonna define a starting position for this bad boy, which is gonna be the X position, which we want to set equal to the view width of the view zero. And we want to divide this by two. So what this basically will do is check how large is our current view. It will divide it by two and that will equal the center of the view, if you get my drift. Of course we do the same thing with the view h view of 0 divided by 2. So these are two very important variables that you have to use often. The width of the view and the height of the view. Great, so with that we set the starting position of this bad boy. The last thing we want to do is set up maybe the variables for the camera movement. There are gonna be two variables related to the camera movement, namely the global camera speed, I would say. And we are gonna set this to 10. So it will move the camera by 10 pixels once we click a button that is supposed to move the camera. And next up we have the global zoom speed, which I think I'm gonna set to 1.2, let's say 1.25 for the time being. I have no idea what the sweet spot is gonna be. Great, okay, so with that I think we can get this out of the way and tend to the tile generation. So right now nothing is basically happening, but what I would like to happen right here is that we get a basic floor going. Eventually it's gonna be a little bit more complex, but for now we're just gonna create a group here. We're gonna call this group tiles and in here I'm gonna create a very simple sprite. It's gonna be sprite tile 01. We're gonna have generic names this time. It's gonna be 32 by 32. Yes, why the heck not? And we're gonna make this very boring and gray. So just a little tile like so, like a concrete tile of some sort. There we go, save that bad boy, okay. And we have to do the same thing in the objects. We have to have this as an object. And the reason I'm doing that is so that we can actually interact with the tiles. So eventually also the tiles are gonna have different functionalities. But for now, we're just gonna utilize one tile in order to accomplish things. So this is gonna be object tile 01, and it's gonna use the graphics of the sprite tile 01. Now the tiles should be all the way in the background. So maybe we set the tiles to 100. This should be like the last thing visible. Okay, just to be sure, there we go. Okay, now that we actually have an object to address and to spawn into the tile generation, we should actually do that. So let's go ahead and actually use a for loop in order to check all of the squares. No matter how large our room is gonna be, this generation code is gonna work for the time being. We're gonna define one variable, which is i, and another one, which is ii. I. Then I also want, uh, let's say, a third variable, which is the current x position. So we kind of have to store the x position. The y positions aren't important. Good. Right here we start our for loop. So the first thing we need to define is where we start with i, which is always 0. And then we want to go ahead and check whether or not i is smaller than global tiles width. So we basically want to place a tile and do this until we reach the end of the room and therefore we check the global variable we defined before. Next up, we want to increment the i thingy machingy right there. No, actually equals or plus equals one. There we go. I think that is or should be working out. We just need to make the squirrely brackets and we want to create an instance right here. Instance create. And of course, the coordinates of the x position should be i times global dot tile size. And you can already see at the beginning i is zero. So i or zero times global tile size is gonna equal zero and therefore x is gonna be zero. And this is exactly where we want the first tile to be. 
then afterwards it's gonna be one times global tile size because we incremented this by one. So it's gonna move over one tile every time we run this for loop, which is great. The Y position right here can be zero because we want to start on the top row. And then of course the object we want to create is the object tile 01. There we go, something like that. Great, the next thing we want to do is store our current X position. And the X position is simply I times global dot tile size. Okay, now maybe let's have a quick look at the game and what it currently does. What we should be seeing is one single row of tiles until the end of the room. Now, of course, I cannot really check until the end of the room because we don't really have a camera movement in there. But another thing you can see is that our dot is now in the center of the screen rather than on the very top left. Good, let's create the second for loop, which is for I, I, and here of course we use the second variable. It, it's gonna be zero in the beginning and we want to check if it is smaller than global.tiles height. And then we want to increment this of course also by one. There we go, brackets up and close. We want to create another instance, which is gonna be the current X position and it's gonna be the ii times global dot tile size for the y. So for every time we are moving one tile over, we are also checking the row downwards. So we are also creating those guys. So the last thing we need is the object in there, which is tile 01. There we go. And now what we should be seeing when starting up the game is the tiles being generated. Of course, it also takes a little longer. Oh, there might actually be something wrong here. Yeah, of course, what, what did I do here? I, I plus equals I, I. I, of course, should do I, I plus equals one. There we go. Now this is gonna work. And there we go. Look at that. All of the tiles have been generated and the entire room has been filled out. That is great. So the last thing we want to do now is the camera movement. I'm gonna do this as easily as possible for the time being. Let's open up this script and get it to work. So remember, this is within the step event. So maybe the first thing we want to do is uh, have a little refresher at the start of every frame. So we're gonna choose to refresh the X view of zero. And we wanna set that equal to X minus view of W view of zero divided by two. I want to do the same thing for the Y view. So that's gonna be equal to y minus view h view divided by two. And of course what this does is change the x position of the view away from our core object, but only away half of the view. So basically our core object is always gonna be in the center of the view, no matter where we are going with the object. So that is what this does. The next thing we want to do is the user input. So let's make a nice title for that. We're gonna take care of the panning functionality first. Here we want to check if the keyboard check VK right. So basically we want to check if we press the right arrow or we want to check also if we press of course the D letter. And for the letter, we have to use the ORT with another bracket and something like that. I think it has to be a capital letter, something like that. So if we press either the right key or the D button, we want to set X plus equal global dot camera speed, right? We want to move towards the right side with the speed of the camera speed, which we set in the global settings. This way the user could also eventually change it if he wants to. However, we only want to do that if we are not already at the very end of the room. So we shouldn't be able to go across the end of the room. Therefore, I'm gonna set another if functionality here. So if x is smaller or equal to room width minus the view of w view of zero divided by two, only then we want to do that shebang here. There we go. So now we can only move towards the right side if X is already smaller than the room width divided by two. Great. Now we can basically copy and paste this for all directions. For instance, right here, we would want to go towards the left and we want to use the A key. 
if x is bigger or equal than zero, actually plus room width. Of course, here we have to think vice versa. We have to start at zero, which is the very left and add half of the room view. Right up to this point, we should be able to pan towards the left. And of course, also this should be x minus equals global camera speed. Let's copy this one more time for the VK up, I would say. No, let's do VK down first. This makes more sense, mathematically speaking. Or the letter S, of course, then we want to change the Y position. Is Y smaller or equal to the room height, actually? Minus the view of H view divided by 2. And then we want to change the Y camera speed to be plus equal global camera speed. Great, let's do this one more time for the upwards direction or W, which is bigger or equal. Come on, let me do that. Room height, no, we want to have zero plus view, H view divided by two, and this should be minus equal global dot camera speed. Great, okay, that should already be working. Let's actually run the game and check this out. Yes, indeed, look at that. I can move towards the left and I cannot go further than the end of the room, as you can see. Also, I cannot move further up. I can move in two directions at the same time and move all the way over to the end of the room here. Okay, now the only thing that's left to do is do the zooming functionality. We're gonna do just a basic zoom for now. We want to get into the mechanics of the game a little bit until we know how the camera movement should really work. So let's do a zoom functionality right here and here we want to check if the mouse wheel is down and we want to add a bunch of curly brackets here. There we go. And right here, we basically want to change the view, W view, so the width of the view. And we want to change that times equal global dot zoom speed. And it is very important that you multiply and divide these things. Don't add and subtract them. Because as I said, the ratio is important and multiplying keeps the ratio. So we want to do the same thing with the Y view. So that should be times equal global dot zoom speed. No, not the Y view. This is a single point, the Y. We want the H view, which is the height. Okay, that should theoretically work. We only have to do the other direction, which is mouse wheel up, obviously. Add the brackets and this should be view width of view zero divided equals global dot zoom speed. And last but not least, let's do the same thing for the H view, something like that. So just as a clarification, if you didn't know this terminology, you can use in order to save yourself a bunch of coding. Basically, you take the division sign in front of the equal sign and there you go. You don't have to write this again in order to do the same operation here. So just as a little side note. Anyways, now let's check out if that works in our game. And there we go. I'm gonna use the mouse wheel and yes, indeed, look at that. And of course, because we used adapted code, you can see even if we are zoomed back a little bit, I cannot actually move across the end of the room. Of course, I can still zoom a little bit out and now I'm not able to move at all. But of course, we are gonna restrict the zooming a little bit eventually for the time being. I just wanted the possibility to move across the map so that we can start with the functionality of the game. However, guys, with that note, I think we're gonna wrap up this first episode. Don't forget to leave down your support. It would be very much appreciated. Also, what kind of things do you want to see in the game? Do you have any questions, etc, etc? Leave them all down in the comment section and leave your thumbs up. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.